I'm going to take you on a journey. AI is here. You can stop trying to make it go away. It's not going away. New technology usually causes one of three responses. This is where I live. I get excited about new technology. I get excited about gadgets, things that are going to make, me, uh, make, make my life easier, uh, automations, everything. This is where I live. However, a lot of you live here, especially when it's new. You're concerned, not sure how this is going to play out, how's it going to impact me, not in a good way, not, you know, you're, you're thinking of those things. And of course, then there's just flat out fear. You're panicked. The world is going to end now because of this new thing that just came out. Well, some will always believe that new technology is here to replace them. And I want you to repeat after me. This is going to be a statement, and I'm going to explain it. So just bear with me. Repeat after me. New technology replaces jobs, not people. Say it. New technology replaces jobs, not people. And you're puzzled. I see the looks. So I'll give you an example. Beyonce and Taylor Swift are on some of the biggest music concerts on tour right now in history. And we have digital music. We have synthesized music. We have a rapper that synthesized. We have all of this technology. Last time I checked, no one is paying thousands of dollars to sit in an audience to hear a robot sing, dance, or play an instrument. Say it with me. New technology replaces jobs, not people. You're still going to go see Beyonce no matter what comes out. You're still going to see Taylor Swift no matter what comes out technology-wise. So this is not a new concept. You think about it, in our lifetimes, especially in my lifetime, because I'm probably a little older than some of you, we have seen jobs get replaced by technology. Some of these jobs, you're probably thinking, yeah, when's the last time I used a travel agent? I just do it on my phone. And they're trying to replace you at the checkout with self-serve. I refuse to do this one, though. Like, I'm, no. Yeah, I, I'm not getting a discount. Like, you're making me do the work. I don't work here. Anyway, um, when's the last time you saw an elevator operator? When's the last time you saw most of these positions? The people still exist. The jobs changed. Technology usually creates more jobs than it replaces. And I'm a prime example of this. I wouldn't be standing here today had it not been for technology early on in my career. I started here with desktop publishing, PageMaker, a Mac, and a laser writer. I had no formal training. I did not go to a school. I did not learn any of this. I did it all on the go. I took out a loan for 10K to buy the stuff. I set up an office, rented it down here in downtown Detroit to start my business. I knew nothing about it, but I did it. AOL and the World Wide Web gave us information at our fingertips in our own homes. Digital cameras, Kodak was one of the first digital camera back companies. And to think about it, that they're pretty much gone now. But they were one of the first to give us digital cameras that all, you see all these people walking around with today. Blogs gave us a voice without having to go to a a uh, magazine or a newspaper and beg to be published. Amazon.com, now this one is a, is a big one because it kind of like decimated some brick and mortar, especially bookstores, but it gave us the ability to self-publish and get our words out on a printed page that others could buy without having to get approval from a publisher. It also enabled this new thing they have called the drop, so that brands can actually get their stuff in front of millions of people that they otherwise would have never been able to be in front of. So, we think about music. And a friend of mine here, Bruce, we talked about Napster a few minutes ago. And we all downloaded songs from Napster illegally and all that. But the bottom line, we now buy, the bottom line is it gave, this technology gave artists the ability to record music and publish their songs, have concerts, everything, without having to go through a record label first. YouTube, my shows are on YouTube now. No TV was ever gonna put me on TV for my shows. I don't have to. And by the way, side note, my YouTube revenue paid for my photography studio, paid for cars, paid for lots of things. Let's put it that way. 
Palm phones, who can remember these? This was the staple. You had a PDA and a phone, you were happy. And believe it or not, I saw this stat that at one point, Palm was bigger than Apple and NVIDIA, the chip company, combined. I didn't believe it, so I researched it. They were not only bigger than them, they were bigger than McDonald's and GM at one point. Anyone carrying a Palm today? You know why? Because this happened. Apple, not a phone company, created a touchscreen phone and Palm and BlackBerry dismissed it. They said, everyone's gonna still want a physical keyboard. No one's gonna to wanna to do this on a touch screen. What hap we all know what happened as a result. Podcasting and live streaming enables me to have my weekly show live, enables you to live stream on the spot from your phone to anyone in the world. So, AI, the next thing. It's the next thing that's gonna cause excitement, concern, and fear. This is where we should be, happy, dancing in the rain. This is where most of you are, because <laughs> you think this is about to happen. And there's lots of social media posts out there to support it. It's a fast-moving train coming towards us. So I encourage you to get on board and stop don't miss it, because we saw some of the examples earlier of people that miss it, and we don't, definitely don't want to be in front of it. AI is far from perfect, makes mistakes, and it'll be a long time before it's perfect, if ever. So you still have a role. Let's talk generative AI. This is where I live. This is where I'm excited. Chat GPT is great. I use it all the time. But I'm into generative AI, where I can literally type a text prompt and get images that never existed before. Now, I don't use it to generate images from scratch. I use it to assist me in my photography. So as a photographer, for example, I might take one of my images from Horseshoe Bend, like this one, that I didn't really like when I took it, and straighten it out, and have generative fill fill in the edges. As it fills in those edges, the one thing I hated about this image was the sky. So I'll use AI to select that sky, figure out what the sky is. I don't have to draw around it, it just knows what it is, then I'll use generative fill and type in beautiful desert sky and have it replace that sky with a better one. So now I can use this image. All right, let's move on. Coffee stains. Near impossible to fix. Takes hours to get this right. So let's make some selections. Let's go through it. And let's let the AI fix it with a click. All right, it gets better. Maybe we're envisioning a career change after being at TEDx today. So we want to be a doctor. Well, why not generate a hospital background for this woman so she can perceive herself visually as to where she's headed? So now we not only generate this background, we even give her a staff, by the way. That's pretty cool. But she needs to look the part. So let's go ahead and make that selection. I know some of you were taking pictures out there with Sean Lee. He's going to do some of this with your pictures if you go to the Adobe booth. So making selections, going around it, and then we're going to have the AI generate her uniform as a doctor. All for mere mortals that can type a couple of words. So just like that, we get her in a uniform. We get multiple choices, by the way. So let's move on. So I'm going to wrap up and just simply say, I love this technology, and you should too. Don't be afraid of it because you're just gonna get left behind if you ignore it. You're, don't be palm. So, with that said, that's the image I used for the promo for this. Embrace new technology, get on the tracks, and get on the, don't get off the tracks, get on the train. Thank you. <laughs>